Coffee Break German, Season 3, Episode 24. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Wie geht's dir heute, Andrea? Mir geht es wunderbar. Danke. Und dir, Marc? Ja, mir geht's gut. Danke. What is our topic today? Today is a very interesting topic. I think that. Um, and it's, uh, we're looking at past participles, but we're using them as adjectives. Okay. So I'm thinking this is something that we probably do in English without really thinking about it. Um, if something is, I don't know, it's a, a baked tart or something like that. That's right, yes. So the baked there is what we've done to make the tart, but it's really ultimately a past participle. Yes, that's correct. And in German, this means cases. Yeah, yeah I was thinking it means cases. <laughs> we've, we've obviously got to think about the changes that we make to these Adjectives as a result of them becoming adjectives. So let's find out more about this. Bist du bereit? Ich bin bereit. Also, los geht's. Yes, so let's look at these past participles that we use as adjective. Um, we know the past participles from our past tenses, the perfect tense and the pluperfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, do you remember how we create this uh, past participle? I think typically we add a g at the beginning and then add the letter t at the end. Yes, so more or less it's g at the beginning, yeah. And then we have the root and then in the end we have a t or sometimes we have et at the end in the case of arbeiten, because otherwise it would just say gearbeitet and uh, that doesn't sound so good. Let's look at some of these. Maybe you can help me build these. We have kochen. What would be our past participle? That would be uh, gekocht. Exactly. Well done. And then if we have baden, baden works a bit like arbeiten. So uh, baden would become gebadet. That's correct. Well done. Super. There are other other regular structures with, for example, separable verbs. If we look at einkaufen, what happens there? Well, we put the ge in between the separable part and the rest of it. So eingekauft. Genau, das ist super. Eingekauft, aufgeräumt. There are many others. And then uh, let's quickly look at my favorite group. And it's the verbs that are ending in ihren, we uh, zum Beispiel probieren. That one just becomes probiert. Ja, oder telefonieren. Telefoniert. Genau, sehr gut. You know why I like this group so much? Why is that? Well, it's super easy. And also, us Swiss speakers, we have more of these verbs uh. than Austrian and German speakers. Okay. Because we have, for example, grillen. Yeah. We say grillieren. Grillieren, okay. Oder parken. Parkieren. You park your car. Yeah. We say parkieren. Okay. And there are a few more. Excellent. <laughs> and then, of course, there are also many irregular verbs, which you know and our listeners know. Uh, for example, we have fliegen, which turns into... Geflogen. Genau, oder essen. Uh, gegessen. Genau. And there are many more. Yeah, there are quite a few of these. But we've already covered these when we were looking at the, the perfect tense, so we don't need to go back through all of these just now. Yes. What they all have in common is that these past participles can be used as adjectives before nouns. And I'll give you a little example. Yeah, I I have uh, das gemalte Bild. Right, so uh, the verb there is malen, mm -hmm. to paint. Genau. So das gemalte Bild, the painted picture. Genau, das ist richtig. Yeah, the painted picture. So we have malen, gemalt, 
and then das Bild, das gemalte Bild. Okay. Or, for example, ein gekaufter Apfel. So, a purchased apple. Genau. Ja. Uh, instead of one that grew in your garden, Yes, for indeed. Indeed. Or a homemade apple. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something else. So, you said gemalte Bild and uh, gekaufter Apfel. So, we're seeing uh, adjective endings uh, added to the end of these past participles. They just work like adjectives now. Yes, so it's the same adjective endings that we have seen many, many times. Yeah, These past participles, just like other adjectives, now have to follow the rules that we use for adjectives. So uh, the, the, the endings are determined by the gender of the noun and the, the number of nouns and also the case in which the noun is. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I'll just uh, make you practice this a little bit. Okay. Perhaps what we could do is kind of work them out together in a sense. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Okay. So uh, earlier I joked about homemade apple, mm -hmm. but um, how do we say uh, something is homemade? It's, like a homemade cake? Well, I think we use uh, machen, first of all, then it becomes gemacht. And then when it's homemade, it's hausgemacht, yeah? Ja, das ist richtig. But we now have to work out how that would work in, uh, well, in an adjectival form. So you said a homemade cake. So it's ein Kuchen, um, which is masculine. And if we're looking at the indefinite form of the adjective, then just working this through in my head, we're going to use the forms that end the same way as the definite articles. Yeah. So that would then be, I think, ein hausgemachter Kuchen. Yeah, sehr gut, super. So what if there was only one and you're pointing at that one? Yeah, and it's the homemade cake. So... Is this the nominative? Yes. So the homemade cake looks great or something like that. Yes. So then it would be der hausgemachte Kuchen. Genau, das ist richtig. Der hausgemachte Kuchen. And what if you want that cake? I, I would like to have, ja, ich möchte. Den hausgemachten Kuchen. Genau, sehr gut. And let's see if you want a piece of the homemade cake. Ein Stück. So that would be the genitive. Therefore, it would be ein Stück des hausgemachten Kuchens. Genau, sehr gut, bravo. Okay, so I'll put you out of your misery here. <laughs> and we move on maybe to another example. Please. Okay. And we have a used car. So uh, what is a used car? So to use something is brauchen. Um, therefore, if we find the past participle, it would be gebraucht. And you said it's a used car in the nominative. That would be ein gebrauchtes Auto. Genau, sehr gut. Now let's try out uh, dativ, yeah. Um, I sit in the used car. Definite article dativ. So, would that be ich sitze in dem gebrauchten Auto? Genau, sehr gut, super. So, let's move on to a next uh, word combination. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Hidden gold. How do we say hidden? Right. Um, so, versteckt would be hidden. Um, and it's das Gold. So, verstecktes Gold. Genau. So, how do you say, I have found hidden gold? Okay. So, that one becomes accusative. So, ich habe, uh, well, it would just be the same, wouldn't it? Verstecktes Gold. Yeah. yeah. So, ich habe verstecktes Gold 
äh, gefunden. Genau. So now the found hidden gold is in the museum. So it would be äh, das gefundene versteckte Gold. Ja, genau. Ist im Museum. Genau, sehr gut. Bravo. Well done, Mark. Mark gibt es okay. Mir. Das war sehr, sehr gut. Bravo. I think you deserve a little break. I think so. I think we all deserve a break. So coming up after the break, we'll have a, a conversation featuring some of these uh, adjectives, well, participles being used as adjectives. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Welcome back. We are now going to be listening to a, a sort of dialogue, but it's a little bit different this time, Andrea, isn't it? Yes, so this is about a cookery show, mm -hmm. and it's uh, Kochen mit Jürgen, okay. so Cooking with Jürgen, our presenter. And Jürgen has a guest called Marianne, who is bringing in a nice uh, cookie recipe. Sounds good. Let's have a listen. Herzlich willkommen zurück bei Kochen mit Jürgen, liebe Zuschauer und Zuschauerinnen. Wir haben vor der Werbung über Weihnachtskekse gesprochen, und jetzt hören wir von Bäckermeisterin Marianne Huber das Rezept für die zuvor erwähnten Spitzbuben. Marianne, bitte. Ja, genau. Danke, Jürgen. Also, schauen wir uns das Rezept einmal an. In diese Kekse kommen die folgenden Zutaten. 250 Gramm weichgeschlagene Butter, 125 Gramm gesiebter Puderzucker, 2 Teelöffel Vanillezucker oder ein bisschen Vanilleessenz, eine Prise Salz, ein verklopftes Eiweiß, 350 Gramm gesiebtes Weißmehl und 200 Gramm erhitzte Fruchtmarmelade. Gut, in einer Schüssel fügen Sie den gesiebten Puderzucker der weichgeschlagenen Butter zu. Dann geben Sie den Vanillezucker, das verklopfte Eiweiß und das Salz bei und mischen alles zu einer Masse. Geben Sie das gesiebte Weißmehl der gut vermischten Masse bei und mischen Sie weiter, bis Sie einen Teig haben. Wickeln Sie den Teig in Klarsichtfolie ein und legen Sie ihn mindestens zwei Stunden in den Kühlschrank. Nehmen Sie den gekühlten Teig aus dem Kühlschrank und warten Sie 30 Minuten bis zur Verarbeitung. Stechen Sie mit Ausstechern Kekse aus dem ausgerollten Teig aus und legen Sie die ausgestochenen Kekse auf ein mit Backpapier ausgelegtes Backblech. Schieben Sie das belegte Backblech in den auf 200 Grad vorgeheizten Ofen und backen Sie die Kekse 6 Minuten. Lassen Sie die Kekse auf einem Keksgitter auskühlen. Erhitzen Sie die vorbereitete Marmelade in einer Pfanne bis sie flüssig ist. Danach bestreichen Sie die Hälfte der ausgekühlten Kekse mit der erwärmten Marmelade und setzen danach einen Deckel auf jeden Keks. Bestreuen Sie die fertigen Kekse mit ein bisschen Puderzucker und fertig sind Sie zum Verzehr. Mmm, da läuft einem gleich das Wasser im Mund zusammen. Bei uns im Studio riecht es auch schon nach frisch gebackenen Spitzbuben. Ich kann es kaum erwarten, einen zu probieren. Tausend Dank, liebe Marianne, für dieses wunderbare Rezept. Nun geht es weiter mit... Okay, it sounds, it sounds delicious. I think I'd like to make these cookies too. 
They are delicious, I have to say. It's one of my favourites. Okay, let's talk a little about what happened in the conversation, but uh, we'll go through it in detail in our bonus episode. Yes, so as I said, this is Kochen with Jürgen, and Jürgen uh, has invited Marianne to show how to make Spitzbuben. That's a famous cookie uh, for German and Swiss and probably Austrian Christmas time. Okay, so we first of all hear the ingredients and then we have a sort of step-by-step instruction on how to make the, the cookies. That's correct. So you mix all the ingredients together until you have a dough and then wrap the dough into cellophane. And then that uh, little parcel goes into the fridge. Okay, and then it comes out uh, from the, the fridge about half an hour before uh, you're going to start working on it. Yes, that's correct, because otherwise it's too hard to work on it. You roll it out and then you get nice uh, cookie cutters and cut the cookies and then bake them for six um, minutes. And then, and this is where it gets really delicious, you heat some jam so that it gets nice and liquid and then you make little cookie sandwiches. Okay, you but, spread the jam onto yeah. the cookies and then you, you take a bottom and a lid and then you make little cookie sandwiches. My husband says they're just like jammy dodgers, <laughs> but um, I don't think so. They are a far superior cookie to a jammy dodger. Well, the, nothing against jammy dodgers. I'm sure our, our listeners will have their uh, their own version of, of this, regardless of, of where they are. Uh, but you now know that Spitzbuben uh, are one option to, to make for your, your German winter celebrations. Ja, genau. Okay, it's almost time to finish this episode. But before we do, there's time for one more thing. Ja, wir haben noch eine Kleinigkeit and we're using a nice past participle in this one. Einem geschenkten Gaul schaut man nicht ins Maul. Right, okay, so there's a piece of vocabulary in here that I am definitely not familiar with. Gaul, is what's Gaul? gaul? <laughs> yeah, Gaul is a horse. Oh, and not a pferd. Yes, but uh, a Gaul is it's not a very fancy word for a horse horse. Okay. Yeah, so it's maybe a kind of a workhorse. Right, okay. So einem geschenkten Gaul schaut man nicht ins Maul. So um, the Maul is the mouth and you don't look not in the mouth and so on. So are we saying basically don't look a gift horse in the mouth? That's exactly what we're saying. Yeah, but it rhymes. Yeah. Einem geschenkten Gaul. Talk us through the the cases and the <laughs> yeah. adjective endings there. Yes. So it's der Gaul. Yeah, der Gaul. And it was uh, geschenkt. Yeah. And here we have einem, a nice dative. Geschenkten, dative ending. Gaul. Yeah. Schaut man nicht ins Maul. You don't look into the mouth. Okay, so einem geschenkten Gaul schaut man nicht ins Maul. Yeah, it is jemandem in den Mund schauen. Right. Yeah, also it's jemandem, it's a dative. Okay. And I said Mund because this is what we use for human beings. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really just animals uh, that we use Maul okay. with. Yeah, except if you're Swiss. Oh. And you use it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and we come across as very uncouth sometimes <laughs> uh, when we speak of Maul and everyone goes, ooh, uh, you mean Mund, yeah? <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed learning this particular phrase and, of course, working through or using of past participles as adjectives. Uh, and we'll be back soon with more German. Don't forget also that you can go through the, the, the cookery show in detail with us. And we're doing that in our bonus lesson. And you can find that at coffeebreakgerman.com. Vielen Dank, ja, und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. Tschüss. 
You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>